Hello, I'm Ed Brussel, and this is the audio commentary for the Oi Mate Show. That bit at the start is brand new, because it has been remastered indeed. The new Malone Entertainment logo. Brilliant. <clears throat> well, what I'm going to tell you now is basically how me and Simon came up with the idea to film a uh, short comedy sketch show. It all began when uh, we were watching the Disney Channel, in fact, and they had a little joke advertising feature on there. We decided, you know what, most of our films are quite serious and we never do anything fun, which me and Simon are mostly like, we like to do com comedy and stuff. So we thought, why don't we do a comedy sketch show? And this came out of it. But, <clears throat> yeah, we went outside, and this was actually the first thing we filmed. I think this whole thing is in order of how it's filmed, yeah. That is stolen directly from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which I only found out, like, a year ago. Yeah. Don't know why Robert froze them. So Simon is off screen here, and he didn't know that I was doing a take, hence the realistic response there. Rubbish cut. This was meant to be on a tripod. I could have gone in and got the tripod. I just couldn't be bothered. So it was just handheld, which is why the effect doesn't really work. <clears throat> that is a reference to Shrek and Donkey, as you probably know if you've seen the film. Even that. <laughs> that was cut like that straight from the camera. We did <clears throat> we didn't intend it to be like that, it just turned out like that. It go, uh no. It just worked out to be pretty funny. Like this. This is all improvised with Simon. Very very good. It is good at improvisation, Simon is. Simon's often said to me that when filming the I Make Show, it's more of a, yeah, listen to what Ed has to say and I'll just do it, even if I don't really know what's going on. And I think that shows. Yeah, I do say, like, Oi Mate about four times then, yeah. Hence the name of the show. Brilliant, yeah. The crap rubber. I have all the sketches, I don't know why I like this one loads. It's a really random one to have. <clears throat> Five hours later. Oh dear. This is my living room, yeah. My, well, my old TV, yeah. Oh, I missed that. In no way. <coughs> <sighs> One question I must ask while the scene is going on is that why would a robber break in and then try and break out again without stealing anything, you know? It's beyond me. Ah, <laughs> uh, the five hours later gag comes up again. Yes, that is me behind the camera. I've noticed in these old videos I rub my hands a lot, which is really annoying. I wish I could go back and slap me for doing it. Look. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. It's gonna, yeah, there we go. What did I tell you? It is like every take. Yep, there I am. I am doubling up. Look at that. Look at that. And so there's someone moving upstairs. Our creaky floorboards have shown off again. This guy actually wants him to rob him, which is odd. <clears throat> this was filmed. I'm I do not I'm not sure here, but I think it was filmed before Christmas, two thousand and one, maybe I don't know, or just after. 
<coughs> but this is actually the second OMH show. There wasn't another one which was which was earlier on. That one, no, that one actually was before Christmas because I remember I wrote and performed a song called "I Wish That Tomorrow Was Christmas Eve." Ironically, while recording that, it was actually Christmas Eve the next day. But we lost all of the original show, so we we've kind of grown to accept the fact that this is the way make sure. We've had loads of different plans to go ahead and film a third series. I think we even did start to do one, but it never went anywhere. It's, hmm. the scene here was a long day's shoot, just because Robert couldn't say his lines properly. But he got them in the end. Bandai, this was actually all Simon's idea. I had no idea why. I mean, it is funny, like, the first time. It's like three sketches and it gets a bit tedious after a while. <coughs> a obvious reference to Fred Durst, lead singer of Limp Bizkit. How embarrassing. I bet it is. <laughs> Haven't seen this in a while. Can't believe this used to be my favourite song. Yes, and that is the joke. The fact that he is just bleeping out the words to a song. He's he's not actually singing, and it's clearly not him singing. He's just bleeping out the words. That has become an often quoted line, actually. I don't know why. Myself, myself, I like it. I like it a lot. I have no idea why. It's not a funny line. It's not good. It's rubbish. I realise how much in this scene Fred Kirst acts like David Brent of The Office. And this was like filmed before I'd even seen The Office. And then I started getting references to the guy, which, although he is very funny, I was kind of annoyed by, you know. I don't like being referenced to different people. I like to be myself, you know. This was a revolutionary shot here. This was doubling up at its greatest. We had Simon at one end of the room, Simon at the other end of the room. This was an achievement on the day. Some 41 leg hop. The days and days of trying to do that, getting your leg through your leg and your arm. I don't know if Simon could actually do it or whether he's putting it on then. Yeah, that cut there. Yeah, that's me holding up the dressing gown, making it look like it's him bouncing. It just worked surprisingly well. Especially this punch here. You gotta love it. Vindictive man. No! <laughs> Ah, oh, high-pitched voices. Although Simon does actually sound quite similar to what he did before. Well, before, I mean now, even. As me, I, I do sound very high-pitched. I don't know if anyone really noticed this, but this guy here is actually based on Mr. Jones, Mr. Andrew Jones, at school. And uh, he's, he's not like that at all. The accent is barely Welsh, and it's rubbish. And um, he's really not that fat. <laughs> he certainly doesn't have a pillow stuffed out his shirt, you know. But nevertheless. Now the, the gag in this one is that he is simply mouthing the words to the CD. And not I'm not even mouthing them well. No. That's what you get recording straight away, not rehearsing. That is my old room there, actually. I've changed it since. I'm actually in there now. Yeah. It does look very, very different now. And I'm glad because it looks awful there. I do not like David Beckham anymore. Nor do I like WWF wrestling. Yeah, the Hexagonal Gag was 
mainly for people who did design in year 10 and 11, which uh, no one else will get it. <laughs> no. Billy Joe, the lead singer of Green Day, if I'm not mistaken. He has Q by the Green Day track. I think we have broken quite a lot of copyright laws here. Whoops. This goes on way too long. It really does. <laughs> I can remember writing, oh good, a freak, while Simon was outside the room on the camera. And then I put it on, and it, when we watched it back later in the day, he was surprised by it. I'm not sure if he was pleased, but he certainly was surprised. And the gag here is that he's drinking whenever he's supposed to be singing. You know, it gets to the point, does it? It should have ended around now. But no. Thanks to uh, VHS editing, uh, we couldn't really edit as clean or as crisp and as, as we can now, digitally. Given I could have, but... You know, when you're remastering an old... I use the term classic um, loosely <laughs> yeah when you're remastering a classic it tends to be that you want to keep it a classic you don't want to change it too much which is why Simon and I did do actually do some 2004 special editions which is actually on the disc as well but we decided that for the actual DVD it would be better to just go with the original I think so as so. You know, I actually used a tripod this time, you'll notice that it looks surprisingly better. And think of a trick. That was just meant to be random, it doesn't have any point. Just so I could cue that reaction from me. Rugby, he says. He says rugby, yeah. Volvo! Why? <laughs> oh, we were so young. Brackets two years ago. <laughs> you can see him flinch before the ball hits him. <laughs> Terrible. We couldn't have did another take, could we? No. They're not famous. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> My pitiful one here. Yes, that is because I just suck in general. Yep, indeed they are. I wonder why. That's a little annoying. And look, I'm rubbing my hands again. Bruce Forsyth. Matrix. Why did I do that? There's a big drip on the screen now. It wasn't. I don't know why we did this. <laughs> I like to believe that it was Simon who came up with this, not me. I had nothing to do with this. Seriously, good luck. Oh, VHS freeze! You gotta have it. I hate that bit. I. I absolutely hate that. <laughs> what is that about? Seriously. So I'm serious then. Get on with it, Edward. I go on way too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all it is. That's a build up to that. Somebody help me. I'm surprised how many I do that. It's like eight or nine. I'm really impressed. Now I can do that, no. See, I'm wearing an England top there. I used to be quite a fan of football. These days, no. This is by far the longest shoot I have ever had to do. I don't know why 
This has the most amount of outtakes ever in one shot. It's quite a long take, but it just took so many takes to get it right. And we were really intent on getting it right, and it really wasn't worth it. And unbelievably, this is the first take. And then it just cuts to a different one at the end. Why? Because we're stupid. We did that many takes. We did. We went from the start each time. We didn't think, oh, all right, we can uh, stop and just go from a bit further on. No, from the start each time. The sketch kind of relies on people actually, actually having seen and been concentrating on the band idol sketch. Was that James? I don't know if we didn't know we'd shot that already, but I don't know. Uh, David Bass's first appearance in the uh, film. We tried to do the uh, no again, but with uh, Pratt. Didn't work. Fanzone 6, this was such a dumb idea. This was from me. Thinking, yeah, let's make a, like... A show like Top of the Pops, but let's um, stir it with rock stars on it and whatever. <laughs> so I'm presenting it, and I was Fred Kirst doing a crossover sketch, and I performed one of Limp Bizkit's songs. I actually did perform it, however, in this video, it is removed, and it is removed from all versions. Apart from the version that I have, which no one will see. Don't improvise. Please adjust your television set. That's the only thing I think I've added over the footage. I haven't added a lot, but that I did add, just because people would be like, what was that all about? But yeah. <laughs> we were actually going to film that, but we didn't. <coughs> Luckily. See you next week. Well done, David. Classic. This actually leads on from the, one of the deleted scenes. Yeah, where are those two performed, but David didn't like it and I felt that I was being a bit of a prat in it, so I got rid of it. Last minute, of course. Quickly, O'Brien. Ah, <laughs> oh, so legendary. Five on the radio. No, 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 Gotta love it. Five are amazing. Don't diss. <laughs> Seriously. The most famous sketch in the whole piece. George at Posh Guy. <coughs> My favourite for a long time. I watched it too much. It's a bit tiresome now, but it is a classic. Indeed. In the 2004 special editions, I uh, put Carl's face over David. Well, I didn't, Simon did. Just because we had an argument and we fell out. But we've since made amendments and we have been allowed to use his face and voice again. David came up with a concept for this uh, before we started filming, and I, and I made it into a scene, really. And, I mean, I came up with him freezing at the end and him going into a dream, which has actually taken off one of the original sketches from the first Oi Mate show. It's bare. Classic.
sick bit of cover here. <laughs> I don't know how he breathes like that. Well done. Zero. Yes. <laughs> I mean, man. Yes, yeah, my cameo appearance in the scene. Look at his arm. <laughs> White, my lord. Tacky. <laughs> That's the only one not in costume. <laughs> well, no time, actually, but still, he looks the part. That is delicious. <laughs> Very cheap homebrew effect. You know, you're damn section with me. Very horrible death. Really? <clears throat> if anyone can make any sense out of this scene, I don't know. I think we just wanted to do another Fanzone 6 scene. I have no idea why. It's not very funny, but we did another one. I was something weird with the sound in this scene. Couldn't get rid of it, no matter what you did, but it's still there. Brett, <laughs> Daniel improvised most of this, which I'm quite surprised about. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> There's a door there, Pete. I'm sure Daniel does regret that now quite a lot. See you next week! Oh, this is very famous with the lads at school. And James not playing a guard again, which he does in Agents of Destruction. Only this time I'm masked. Daniel not doing the voiceover. Oh man, the days of analog video. We had to do a lot of it ourselves, you know. None of this digital malarkey. High pitch, then to low pitch. That was a new digital editing technique I implemented. And in our second appearance as Pete. This scene is overlong and it goes a bit too far I think I don't really like this scene um, it just goes on way too much Why are you seriously Oh, there's me, it's Red Cursed again. My last appearance ever, it's Red Cursed. Is that Hoover in the background by the sound of it? Ripping someone's head off. Crappy dancing. Your life is on contract.
I said it again because it was so popular. With the guys. Rat. <laughs> oh, Pratt this time. <laughs> That's a musical score at the end. Yeah, please do not ask me why I did this. It's pretty funky, you know? Dear Lord, I hate that credit. <laughs> Which we don't have the right to use, which is true. Online editor? Who knows? She saw David Bass. Probably was. Might have been. Alright, Malala Entertainment, that is it. Goodbye.